Good afternoon, dear QA specialists or those who are planning to become one soon. My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I've been rocking QA world for about nine years as the QA engineer, lead, manager, etc., 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 helping people just like you to become a QA specialist from scratch or to improve your existing skills. And today we're going to discuss five top secrets of how to become a QA specialist in the most effective way within only six weeks. I'm going to walk you through my experience and tell you how did I prepare for a course, how did I go through the course, and what did I do after the course on my own in order to be one of the most successful from my group. Let's get started. So first and the most important secret is pre-education. Whenever you guys decide to go for a course or whenever you decide to do self-education, it is exactly the same story. You have to study, you have to prepare for the course. You cannot simply just pay someone money, jump, jump into it and expect that things are gonna happen because you paid someone money. What I did on my own, what I did during my time, see back in 2014 or something like that, as soon as my friend told me that, dude, you gotta go for the course, you gotta take a boot camp and study there for a few months and then you're gonna be able to get a job. What I did is first, I got scared as, you know what, anyways, and what I did is I started learning about a QA on my own, on my own. I did my own course of pre-education. I started researching through the YouTube, Google, and all, all of the other search engines, whichever format you like, just learning about a QA engineering overall. What is it? How do they do it? How did this guy do it? Watch the YouTube videos. By the way, we have a lot of videos on our YouTube channel, which you're watching right now. If you watch all of them, you're going to be halfway QA specialist. So, as long as you get prepared quite, quite in a good way, you will be much better during the course. It will be much easier and faster for you. For example, I've spent about a half a year on my own before I went for the course because I thought I'm going to be the, one of the most dumbest people in a room. I thought I'll be a farm boy because I came from the farm and everyone else will be an engineer, will be a developer and all of, the, all of them are going to know how to code and I'll know how to, how to play with the cow. That's it. <laughs> Sounds funny, but... That's how it was. And guess what happened? As soon as I joined the course, I was one of the smartest in a room. Yeah, no bragging. Anyways, uh, and that happened just because I was really afraid of being one of the dumbest, so I became one of the smartest. Easy peasy, right? So I would highly recommend you guys, before you start, uh, before you join any course, or even uh, if you're planning to do self-education, that's exactly what you're gonna do all the time, but if you're joining the course, spend quite as much time as possible to get self-prepared. For example, in our course at codemify.com, whenever you sign up for the course, no matter how long is it before the course, if it's a half a year, half a year, a year, we're fine. Five days, beco five days before the course, five days before the course. We give you access to the pre-education section because I know what I've learned and I know I've been teaching people for, I've been mentoring people for about five years or six years now. So I do know what people do need to know and how much they can learn within a short amount of time. So we do allow people to uh, have a, a separate section where you can learn all of the things in the world you can possibly get. So we did create a pre-education section so you guys wouldn't have to waste your time, but you would simply navigate to the website, reserve your spot and start pre-education. Secret number two, the power of the team. Team is one of the most power, powerful, powerful, the power of team. Team is one of the most powerful things you can possibly find when you are going through the education process. When you guys are in a school, when you guys are in a college, university, etc., whenever you are talking to your teammates, whenever you're talking to your classmates, you are learning hell of a bunch of material and you have someone to discuss with everything you've learned so far. Because on your own, you see things one way. When you ask someone else, you will see another vision and you'll compare it with your own and you will find something on the middle. And that's actually the best way. So what I did back in 2014, everything at that time was still offline. So I did go through, to, uh, through the school offline, not online. And I was lucky because I was able to gather all of my teammates, all of my classmates. I could get them to the Starbucks after the education and we would drink coffee and we would discuss what is user story, how does it get created, how do we imagine it. 
And we would simply uh, put, put things down on our own, discuss it within the five to 10 people. And you cannot imagine how much conclusion I would get out of it. Because until that time, I would have my own vision of things. After that, I would be like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So what we do at Konemify at our school, we purposely split every single group into teams and set a lead there. So you guys could, could, join, uh, could join your our online classes, plus you could jump on the calls on your own and discuss it with the teams. Because I think throughout my own experience, it is one of the best tricks you can use in order to be the most efficient during the education process. So please use that. Point number three, self-research. Self-research is another point that will differentiate you from everyone else. During my times, during the offline education in 2014, we had a different schools for different objectives in the school. And I didn't enjoy it all the way because you don't always like the way people are. Someone will explain things to you, but you will like another person. So I think having one teacher, or one mentor is the best way, or at least couple, but when you have a lot, you will find that, oh, I don't digest all of the material from this guy, but I digest it from that guy. So what I did on my own is I did my own research or self-research after every single topic. I would open, I would go home, open up a laptop, and I would research that topic and question every single point that a teacher was or a mentor was explaining to us during the lesson. This did help me a lot to learn quite more than every single person in my group. This did make some teachers hate me because I would question them, I would question their knowledge in front of every single student in our group. Uh, but that did differentiate me quite a lot in on the market when people would start, for example, when people would start looking for a job and they would they would uh, get questions about automation frameworks. I would know a bunch of them because I already did my research and I know which framework is written by which language. Everybody else would know only things that they have learned in a school and not the things they could possibly learn on their own. So whenever you guys go for the course, even I, even I tell it to my students at Codemify.com. I tell whenever, as soon as you guys join the course, as soon as you get the information from me, go home and read about it. Go home and watch YouTube videos about it. I do give you check materials. I did go, go through it on my own. I have nine years of experience or even more, but I want you to do your own research because this is the best way. When you read things, when not someone tells you what to do, but when you find that material, you will learn it in a much better way. So please use it. Point number four, discipline. Discipline is when you do things you don't want to do to get things you want to get. Do you guys eat peanut butter jelly in the sandwiches in the morning? Some of you do. Sometimes I even put cheese on the top. That sounds gross, right? It does. And whenever I give it to my friends, I tell them it's tasty. They hate it. They don't try it again. I do it because I still get a lot of energy from it after the workout in the morning. Anyways, in the same way, when I went through the course, when I was going through the course, I would wake up early in the morning, I would do my workouts and I would jump into self-education before I get to school. After the school, when we, when we would get together in a Starbucks, as I've told you on one of our points, after that, I would go home and people, while they were having fun on emotions, they would say, hey, you wanna guys go for a beer or go, go to a club or go get some wine at a restaurant? That's cool, that's awesome, you should hang out, but you should be disciplined. And in the way I did, I would always go home and I would still learn things even afterwards. If I would feel that I've overloaded, I would fall asleep for half an hour, if possible less, but sometimes I would sleep more. <laughs> Anyways, I, as soon as I would wake up, I would come back to my laptop and learn manual testing and learn automation. When I would go for the class, we did learn Java. Java is one of the, not the easiest languages, let me say it that way, that you can learn in a school as the beginner. So that's exactly why I did try it hard. I did buy a book. I did learn, I did my best, but then I realized it's quite not the best language to learn if you're a beginner. 
if you're a beginner uh, as that or a QA automation engineer, or even if, if, even if you're a programmer, you're gonna explode your brains. So what I did, I did switch to another language, I actually try multiple, I try Python, I try JavaScript, I try Ruby and, uh, Ruby and, and a few other ones, and I found the couple that I like, Python and JavaScript. So I did learn both of them on my own, just because I knew, okay, this doesn't work for me. So I did start learning things on my own, and guess how many face-to-face -face interviews I have failed before I've succeeded? Zero. Discipline. Please work on it. Point number five. But before we get there, I want to quickly remind you guys that we're about to start our next QA engineer and a QA automation engineer course. If you don't get more details, you can find it by the following link right below in the description. And in point number five, what is the difference between a winner and a loser? The difference is an amount of attempts. Loser would simply try once, fail, and go home. Or he or she wouldn't even try it. And the winner would try it, fail, and try it again until they succeed. That's the difference. So as long as you do not give up, there is no way to lose. And for example, one of my students failed multiple interviews and then he, what he did, he simply navigated to our website and find an option, call an expert. So pretty much he rented me for an hour. We went through the coding challenge with him. I built an automation framework from scratch for the backend, for the APIs. And his uh, people who were interviewing him were impressed with the amount of skills that he had. But the thing is, it took us an hour to create automation framework. I've recorded it on a Zoom, shared a link with him. He spent days on learning because he wasn't ready for that much load, for that complexity. But he learned it, I gave him all the comments and he did get a job for $125,000. Anyways, the difference between a loser, a winner and a loser is you guys should not give up. So if you are ever stuck, feel free to hit me up. We have an option to call an expert to call me at our website, kademify.com. You can find the link below. Also, if you guys do need help, if you are not able to get a job, you can follow the same option or you can simply take our course. By, you can find more information by the following the same link. And thank you guys for watching this video. I hope to see you soon.